and fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> the Ten Commandments. Western civilization's first set of public policies and its basic guide to morality. Don't kill, don't steal, don't cheat, don't covet the maidservants. That's a big one. <laughs> it's all there in Exodus chapter 20. I noticed something while reading them the other night. You have to wait until commandment number five. Number five to get to anything that's related to humanity at all. The first four are all about God. They're God's house rules. They're God's house rules. No gods before me. No graven images. Don't use my name in vain. And remember my day to keep it holy. God's basically like killing, shelling, <laughs> lying, stealing. We'll get to those issues later. But for now, we've got important issues to discuss. Like, what are we going to do on my special day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if the first four amendments to our Constitution were George Washington's house rules? <laughs> Amendment number one. There shall be no discussion of John Adams. <laughs> he makes my skin crawl. Number two, no arts and crafts in my house. They create a mess. I mean, you got to realize that the Israelites had been wandering around in the Egyptian desert for two months, two months, looking for the promised land. And their society was devolving. They were lying, they were stealing, they were cheating. They were coveting the maid servants and the man servants. And the guy who had to settle all this was Moses. He was a one-man Supreme Court and Judge Judy all in one. He settled capital murder, capital murder trials, and parking tickets. This is his guy. This is his job. He also had to listen to people complaining. And they complain all the time. Like not being able to drink water for three days. <laughs> being constipated from eating manna every meal, every day. And when? Are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? Hey, didn't I see that cactus a month ago? <laughs> Moses, are we lost? The truth was, the people wouldn't reach the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, for another 39 years and 10 months. That's basically as old as I am. And Moses knew they weren't going to make it. And things kept going as they had been going. So Moses asked God for a policy discussion. God said, sure, Moses, let's stop. Moses said, great, where? Because I'd love to find a shady place. It's very hot down here in the Egyptian sunshine. Maybe, maybe by that big rock. God's reply, Mount Sinai. Moses says, well, that's a good idea. There's a lot of shade down there. No, at the top. Moses says, geez, God, Mount Sinai is 7,500 feet tall. It's a 1,000-foot vertical climb. And remember, I'm 80 years old. I don't know if I can make it up that high. Listen, Moses, do you want to talk or don't you? <laughs> All right, Moses said, I'll climb to the top. So Moses climbs to the top of Mount Sinai. And when he gets there, God is waiting for him. God, I'm here, Moses says. Is that you, Moses? Yeah, God, I'm here. I just, just got here. Oh, you took your sweet time, didn't you, Moses? Well, it is a thousand foot climb, and I am 80 years old, but I'm not complaining, God. Well, anyway, while I was waiting on you, Moses, I had a chance to look around the place, and I noticed this place is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice place, Moses. It's actually kind of special to me. So here's what I want you to do, Moses. I want you to go back down the mountain. This really happened. This is not an exaggeration. I want you to go back down the mountain, Moses. And I want you to tell the people they're not to touch the mountain. They're not to touch the mountain? No, they're not to touch the mountain. And if they do, they die. They die? Jeez Louise, God, don't you think we might be overreacting a little bit? No, those guys are filthy. They mess everything up. I don't want them touching the mountain, OK? Same thing goes for the animals. OK, God, well, let me get this straight. You want me to go back down the mountain that I just climbed to tell the people to not touch the mountain. And if they do, you're going to kill them? Who said I was going to kill them? That's your job, Moses. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. 
Well, how am I supposed to do that? Well, listen, the big thing is, is they're filthy, okay? So you can't touch them. So you either stone them or you shoot arrows at them, okay? Same thing goes for the animals. You just can't touch them. Okay, God, I, I understand. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. But since you are God and you are omnipresent, which means you can be everywhere at once, do you suppose you could tell them? I already tried that. What do you mean you already tried? I, I listened to your voice all day and I, I never heard you say anything. I already tried that. I rolled a cloud over the mountain, I sent down lightning, I sent down thunder, they even shook the mountain a little bit. But I don't think they got it. Oh, that's what that was, Moses said. Well, why didn't you just say it? Why didn't you just say, please don't touch the mountain? Listen, I work in mysterious ways, okay? Why are you busting my balls, Moses? <laughs> that's it. That's the first half. Mr. Toastmaster, for those of you who were not here for part one, or part two, because I never actually did part two. I was going to say. <laughs> part one was about the formation of civilization's first set of policies, which we know as the Ten Commandments. It takes place on the top of Mount Sinai, which God specifically said, do not touch. Part two, which I skipped, is about the actual discussion of those Ten Commandments, which as it turns out, was more of a therapy session for God. <laughs> God was feeling a little inadequate, which is why he created Commandments number one and two, thou shalt have no other God before me, and create no graven images. He was also feeling a little paranoid, particularly after he was, you know, smoking a little weed. <laughs> so he created Commandment number three, don't use my name in vain, and every time you hear his name, it's a little paranoid, and he was feeling a little commemorative, which is why he created commandment number four. Remember my day to keep it holy. And the way you do that is by singing to me, by not working, and slaughtering a cuddly little white man. <laughs> That's how I want to be remembered. Okay, so these rules have worked for 39 years. 39 years these Israelites had been wandering around in the wilderness looking for the promised land. The land flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey, a very specific set of words chosen by Moses' top marketers. <laughs> <laughs> to keep people's eyes on the prize and to make sure that their population will be free of anaphylactics. Very important for this young population. The land flowing with milk and honey. Anyway, they stumbled upon the wilderness of sin. Or translated, literally, I'm not making this up, the wilderness of sin. This is not Las Vegas. This is a place in the desert that is very, very desolate. Okay? But for the second time, the people were thirsty. In fact, they were dehydrated. They were about to die. And so they said to Moses, you've got to give us some water, man. Where are we? Why have you brought us out here to die with our cattle? The cattle were there laying down. They were exposed. And Moses is actually kind of stumped, to be honest. He's a little stumped. So he says, give me a second. And he goes to search for a better connection. He needs a better connection so he can just do a search for water and pop there it is. Except in those days, of course, they didn't have Wi-Fi hotspots. They had a tabernacle, which was essentially a 12-person tent. So Moses goes into this tent. And he says to God, God, the people are thirsty. They're dehydrated. I need some water. And God says to Moses, well, here's what you do, Moses. You go find that rock. That rock, it was a familiar place to Moses because he'd been there before. And here's what you do, Moses. You speak gently to the rock. Speak gently to the rock, and the water will come out, and you guys will drink the water, and everything will be good. And Moses is like, right on. I know this will work because 39 years earlier, when we were lost, 39 years earlier, I actually hit the rock. God told me to, and the water came out, and everybody drank, and they all survived. So Moses goes out, right? There's all the people there. They're actually lying down in a fetal position because they're about to die of thirst. And Moses is feeling rather confident now. And so, according to the Bible, he calls them rebels, but I think the tone is more like losers. Hey, losers! <laughs> hey, losers out there! Looks like you really want me to bring you some water. Do you really want me to do this for you? 
Meanwhile, they're laying down, fetal position. They're too weak to speak. They can't even nod their heads. Fine, I'll bring you some water, losers. So he takes the staff, this is direct translation, and he hits the rock twice. He hits the rock twice. And the water comes gushing out, and it fills the sand, and people are laying there, and they're sipping the water. And they come back to life, and pretty soon all of the Disney characters start showing up too, like the lawn and the Pocahontas and the big tribal dance. And the community is restored. And everything is blissful, it's wonderful. But God comes down and says, Moses, you crossed the line, Moses. I specifically said, Moses, to speak gently to the rock. You hit it twice, Moses. Now I'm going to pause here and say, I understand where Moses is coming from, okay? Because I've dealt with the vending machine before. <laughs> <laughs> And whenever that bag of Doritos gets stuck in the vending machine, I don't say the vending machine, vending machine. You are so sexy. Just give it up to me. And it's no longer. So I hit the vending machine. I hit it hard. Right on the, and sometimes if it still doesn't release, I take that vending machine and I shake it. Did you know that actually 37 people have died and been crushed by vending machines? They did not speak gently to the vending machine. They struck the vending machine. And that's what Moses chose to do. But God said, Moses, you crossed the line, Moses. You were supposed to speak gently to the rock. And you know what his punishment was? Remember, 39 years, wandering around the wilderness, looking for this promised land, this land flowing with milk and honey. God said, Moses, for that mistake, you will not cross in to the promised land. You will die here in the wilderness, and that is just... Thank you.